It's good to be back with you. Today we're talking about Doctrinal Mastery Lesson for Ephesians chapter 2, 19 through 20. This lesson starts with a really great review activity. Remember, we're trying to help students memorize the key phrase and the reference. So here's the reference, Ephesians 2. And here's the key phrase. The church is built upon the foundation of apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone. So there's an idea here that you could do to have the students draw, write, and memorize that phrase. Here's another idea. So I would take six cups like this and write, the church is built upon the foundation of apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone. So the idea is we want to get this phrase in order in a pyramid shape, but we're going to start out by mixing the cups up so they're not going to be in the right order. And then students are going to take a string attached to a rubber band, three strings, grasp each cup and move them off the stack. Once they've unstacked it, then they have to put the cups back in order and restack them to get the phrase correct. And you could have them race to create the pyramid and the correct phrase. I would like to share a training thought from our Doctrinal Mastery training document. It says that the practice portion of the Doctrinal Mastery lesson should be the majority of our time. And each practice application section begins with an opportunity for students to review the principles of acquired spiritual knowledge. They should regularly review these principles so they become confident using them. Be careful not to assume that because one or two students know the principles well, that all of your students know them. So back here in our Doctrinal Mastery lesson, it suggests a review activity for the principles of acquired spiritual knowledge. You have three statements right here that match to act in faith, examine concepts and questions with an eternal perspective, and seek further understanding through divinely appointed sources. So ask the students which of these phrases they would match to which category and why. And again, we're just trying to help students review those principles of acquire spiritual knowledge. Back in our training document, it states that after we review the principles of acquiring spiritual knowledge, that we're going to practice with a scenario. And I'd like to point out here this little technique. You can adapt the scenarios uh, and the suggested questions or other learning activities as needed to better need th meet the needs of the students. Be sure that any adaptations will give students opportunities to practice applying the doctrine and principles of acquiring spiritual knowledge to a realistic situation. So back in our doctrinal mastery lesson, there's a couple of ways you could consider adapting the scenario. First of all, if we back up a little bit in the lesson, there were these three things, A, B, and C. B activity here is a great way to adapt the scenario. And it says, think of a question someone might have about prophets and apostles that Ephesians 2 could help answer. Some examples might be, why does your church have prophets and apostles? What do the scriptures teach about prophets and apostles? Also maybe, why do we need prophets and apostles in our day? when we have the Bible? That was a common question that I heard on my mission. So if students come up with a question, that question can then be your scenario. Then if we scroll down and look at the practice scenario, it's, it says that we have a friend who feels conflicted because she opposes a current church teaching. She has strong feelings against it but claims that she has a testimony of prophets and apostles. So to adapt the scenario, I might just say, hey, what are some of the teachings of the church that young people have a problem with today? And so they might list, it could be something with the word of wisdom. It could be piercings. It could be dating. So rather than just say a current church teaching, insert, how come we can't drink iced coffee? And that becomes... The opposition, and rather than the name your close friend is Steele, just say you have a friend who has a testimony of prophets and apostles but wants to drink iced coffee. 
What could you do to help your friend in that scenario using Ephesians chapter 2? Listing on the board, teachings of the church that young people struggle with today, and then plugging those into the scenario. And then there is also another scenario down here that I think is good in the supplemental activity that, again, is the type of scenario that our young people might run into. Imagine you have a close friend whose family still believe Jesus Christ in the Bible but are thinking about leaving the church because they don't agree with some of the things that prophets and apostles are currently teaching. And then you use that scenario, how can Ephesians 2 help us in that scenario? Now, again, be careful with this one. If there are some people in your class or if there's someone in your ward or branch that has left the church recently, this might be a sensitive topic. And so we just want to be careful if we were using this alternate scenario. But I think it's realistic. And it's the kind of things that our young people will face sometime in their life today. And then my last suggestion for help is this chart right here. It is in the scenario section of the lesson. And I think that it just gives some good questions for our students to consider as they're dealing with these scenarios. So I might have this up on the board or someplace where on the TV or something where students could see this. Have fun with this scenario and this lesson and have a great week in seminary.